Hello everybody, um, how are you doing today? My name is Carolina Chavez, for those of you that don't know me yet. Um, today is Wednesday, April the 22nd. Today is a very special day. We're celebrating Earth Day and also Fashion Revolution Week. Um, we're going to talk about Fashion Revolution and we're going to have an interview today that's going to be very interesting. Um, the, the background of Fashion Revolution, this, this whole thing originated because in 2013, uh, garment workers uh, factory collapsed in Dhaka in Bangladesh. The story is that uh, the day before this happened, the workers complained about uh, some cracks that on the building. They were taken out of the, of the factory. They checked everything and the owners made them come back to work. The very next day, uh, during rush hour in the morning, the factory collapsed. This factory had eight uh, stories that uh, there, there were banks and some apartments in there and also the factories. And the problem with the factories was that the, 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 fl the floors on the top were not approved to build in this structure. And the factories have big machines that with all the noise and with all you know the movement and all the power they have, the building couldn't, couldn't hold them. So um, it, it collapsed killing uh, more than a thousand people, most of them uh, women and a lot of children too. Uh, thanks to um, the media, a lot of attention was brought to this catastrophe. And one of the things that happened was that during, uh, in, in the rubble, they found a lot of um, uh, uh, brands, how do you call the, the etiquetas? The, the brands of many companies, so labels, labels of many companies. And after this accident, uh, the government and the associations and organizations that were trying to, to raise the voice for all these people, uh, they were trying to ask for money, for um, some support for the families that lost, um, that lost, uh, you know, their people over there. So some of the brands that were there um, are Benetton, Prada, Gucci, Versace, The Children's Place, Mango, Primark, Walmart. So um, after this happened, Fashion Revolution began in the UK. They are originating uh, over there. With the goal, their main goal is transparency. Ask for companies to be transparent in their practices, in their supply chain. What does this mean? We, we've spoken about transparency, but why this is so, so important. Um, companies, imagine, um, just to name one, H&M, they subcontract these factories in the other side of the world, and really they don't know who is making their clothes, in what conditions, they don't know in many cases how much they're paid. And this is a big issue because most of these places are living in very precarious, are working, uh, are providing uh, uh, the structure, a very precarious structure for, for these people. So in a way, when we buy, us as consumers, when we buy these products from these big companies, we're contributing to these disasters happening. Um, main, many of these companies are based in, in, in Asia because labor is very cheap. These are very um, weak economies, poor countries, and of course the labor is, is extremely cheap. So what's the goal of these big companies? The profit, right? Um, I was reading about H&M and one of the biggest issues of H&M, they are one of the biggest fast fashion promoters in the world. Fast fashion, we, we spoke about it before. Uh, they, fast fashion is 
cheap clothes, a lot of um, seasons during the year, almost disposable clothes. So imagine the supply chain. It has to, they have to work very fast to produce these clothes in very, in very bad, um, with a very bad quality. You dispose of it, you buy again. So that's how these companies that, uh, uh, operate, making a lot of profit basically over the wellness of the people. So this at some point becomes an issue of, of human rights as well. I'm gonna leave you with, uh, with this interview. We're gonna, spoke, uh, we we're gonna speak a, a little bit about it after and uh, if you have any questions, please uh, write them down on, on Facebook if I can answer them right now, I will. If not, I promise I will look them up and uh, share this information with you, okay? Okay. So, um, hello everybody. We are here with Faisal Samad, the Senior Vice President of the Bangladesh Garment Manufacturers and the Sporters Association. I'm very honored, some, uh, Faisal, that you are here with me, I know it's it's been a rough time and you're super busy, but I'm 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 truly honored and I thank you for this. How are you doing? I'm okay, Carolina. Thank you very much. Uh, it's it's a uh, it's an honor to be here always as well on your show. Um, it, it's a it's a tough situation everywhere. Just like yourself uh, being in the U.S. and we in Bangladesh, uh, uh, tough times, tough times, and a, a global crisis which uh, nobody knows how it's going to end. So. Uh, so, uh, but as, as you are dealing with it in your country and we're doing the same in ours, uh, the best that we can uh, be, be staying safe, um, you know, staying indoors and, uh, and, and as they say, you know, trying to flatten the curve. So, uh, yeah. Doing the best we can. Um, tell us a little bit about your work, please. Sure. Um, I myself, I, I'm, I'm an owner of factories in Bangladesh. But I also am on the board of the Garment Manufacturers and Export Association, which is called the BGMEA. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I've been elected to this position. And um, so I'm the senior vice president. And my responsibility is essentially to uh, our board, actually, our board's responsibility as an association is to um, you know, formulate policies, the right policies for the industry, uh, you know, to make sure that uh, uh, industry progress is in the right direction and as well as uh, to ensure that the government and the customers who buy from Bangladesh and, you know, sort of facilitate uh, that is the role of the, uh, of the BGMEA. Um, and we have roughly around more than uh, 2,000 members who are, who, are, uh, who, are, who are part of the association. Mm -hmm. And um, our exports, you know, last year we, we were almost about uh, 30, more than $30 billion that was exported out of Bangladesh. And then garments is the, is the main export. Rather, it's, you know, it's 80, 80, it's 82 percent of, of Bangladesh's export. Um, Bangladesh has been, uh, you know, um, growing in this industry, uh, you know, uh, for the last sort of uh, 30, 30 odd years. Um, it's, uh, hello? I'm here. Hey. Okay, I'm, I might have missed you. So uh, it's, it's, been, uh, it's been 30 plus years that the industry has been uh, progressing positively. Uh, like, like, any, like any industry, there's been, uh, there's always been uh, lots of uh, sort of ups and downs and we've, uh, you know, we've tried to sort of ride the ups and downs, correct ourselves. Mm -hmm. And then that today, Bangladesh is one of the most compliant industry uh, in the world, uh, you know. Uh, um, and, and as a result, uh, I think uh, the customers are coming and then a lot of brands from the U.S. Uh, buy, uh, buy from Bangladesh. And these are all under, uh, uh, you know, uh, good working conditions and great facilities which has actually developed over the last few years. I, I must admit that as well. Okay. I think that uh, it's, it's, uh, it's been in partnership with the brands and, 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 uh, and uh, you know, other sort of, uh, you know, um, partners who helped us to, 
to upscale our industry. Yeah. What would you say are the biggest challenges for the industry in Bangladesh, the garment workers industry or the garment industry? Well, I mean, challenges are, are, are multiple. You know, I think that uh, for a country like Bangladesh, uh, you know, the challenges are, uh, you know, um, there is bureaucracy in, in doing work. Uh, you know, there's, e there's, there's bureaucracy in the ease of business. Uh, but again, you know, the government and uh, the industry, as in BGME, is working hand in hand to 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 come over those challenges. Uh, um, I think I think where we are where we are today is Bangladesh is trying to increase its efficiency of work. Uh, mm -hmm. There was a time when the labor was cheap, but uh, but now it's not anymore. It's uh, you know the wages, the minimum wage, and the overall wage structure has increased. The facilities are more so um, to be more competitive, uh, you know, in the world, we have to be more efficient. So I think the industry is going through a phase where we have to be more efficient as a as a as a manufacturer uh, mm -hmm. to, um, you know, to to actually, uh, you know, to actually make profits nowadays compared to compared to maybe 10 years ago. So that that I would think is a big challenge. And of course, you know. Buyers, like, like all buyers, yourself, even a, a buyer, a consumer who goes into shops are looking for better deals. And, and the buyers who buy from us, all the big brands in, this, in the world, they're always looking for a, a very competitive pricing so they can buy, buy, uh, buy, buy better and you know, offer the consumers better, of course. Uh, yeah, but you know, all, of this, all of that means that we also have to be more, you know, you know, source better, you know, produce better so that you know we can survive as well as, a, as an industry of course so how are you dealing with this uh, pandemic situation right now because what we hear on this side of the world is that uh the the you know the everybody closed and uh, garment workers are going to their to their towns where they live and that, that it's a very big humanitarian crisis so what's really going on over there yeah, actually, the thing is that uh, you see, um, you see, the, the, the Bangladesh industry is right now under a lockdown. The, um, the government has advised the BGMEA that uh, look, you can run factories, but run it, uh, you know, with certain safety protocols. Mm -hmm. But we, as BGMEA, we chose that no safety is is far important, and lives are more important to us than just running the industry. So we actually have stalled the, the entire industry. We've, we've kept, we've put it on hold for the last sort of three weeks now. Yeah. And, um, and, and, you know, we're observing and we're checking what, uh, you know, how we can restart again under these conditions. Uh, right now, the, 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 uh, you know, the COVID-19 has, uh, has peaked in the last sort of 10 days, right? Um, so, uh, you know, our job right now is to educate our workforce, our members and tell them, you know, uh, you know, uh, and working with the government on, on how to maybe do some bailout packages. And we're talking to customers as well. The effect has been really uh, huge. Uh, the impact has been huge. Uh, the, the customers have canceled uh, uh, more than uh, $3 billion worth of orders. So uh, that is put uh, the entire industry at a, at a jeopardy. So we're, however, still communicating with the customers. Some are coming back and telling us how they can, how they can minimize the cancellations. And so it, it's, it's, it's a great challenge, honestly. Um, and we're dealing with it uh, the best that we can. Uh, we also have to take care of our workers to make sure that they get paid. And we, we know we're, 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 we're actually... Uh, you know, having to now uh, seek some government support, and we have also paid ourselves the salaries of the workers. Um, you know, so so they can maintain a a, a stable uh, you know uh, uh, you know living at the moment, uh, given all the conditions. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, but uh, but there are being protocols being discussed to open the factories. Mm -hmm. uh, we're still working on it. It's not clear as yet. Are they are are you receiving orders for future like the near future? Well, not right now. Not right now. Everything is kind of on hold right now. I think the customers themselves are are shut. 
So uh, most are, uh, of course, the Walmarts are still working because of, uh, besides clothing, they do other things as well, right? So, but, uh, but other, other brands are closed and so no orders are coming in right now. It's more about the orders that we had to, okay. to be able to ship those orders, which were supposed to be shipped this month, right? Or late last month. And of course, you know, um, uh, so yeah, that's the focus right now to sort of not to have orders canceled. That that's also the other that's the other uh, uh, angle on things at the moment. Yeah. Are, are those uh, are uh, would you consider that that uh, aspect is being uh, resolved? Like people are like companies are actually not canceling. Has that come to any conclusion already? Well, no. Can companies have canceled? Right. I told you, as I mentioned earlier, this 3.5, 3, more than $3 billion worth of orders have been canceled. Mm -hmm. But uh, no, there is negotiations ongoing right now where, you know, uh, the association as in the BGME is negotiating with the buyers and, and, and telling them, look, you can't cancel like this. We're, we're kind of uh, in that in that in that stage right now. Besides, individual factories also talking to their customers and telling them for not canceling and because you know, it's going to have a major effect on the on the on the on the whole industry, which uh, you know works on it. And you know, Bangladesh, this industry is the one which is emancipated, uh, uh, you know, women. You know, because eighty percent of the workforce in the industry are, are all women. Mm -hmm. So that has been a huge boost uh, to, to 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 you know to women leadership and to to women emancipation in our country. So uh, so it, it is a very important, a vital, and the, the very vital sector, honestly, to tell you. That's good to hear. Well, um, thank you so much. I know you are very, very busy right now. I appreciate, again, uh, your time. I hope everything comes uh, to the better end for all of us and uh, health-wise that you guys stay safe and take care, okay? Thank you so much. You do the same. And uh, again, thank you for, for hearing, hearing us out as well and hope your, uh, you know, uh, your listeners uh, uh, find uh, it interesting and, uh, and and let's pray for each other and, and hope for the best. That's that's I guess that's what we can do. Yeah, let's do that, Faisal. Thank you so much again. Take care. Thanks very much. Take care. Bye. Bye. That's what we can do. Yeah. Let's do that, Faisal. Thank you so much again. Take care. Thanks very much. Take care. Bye. Bye. Well, this was uh, Faisal Samad from Bangladesh. Um, I'm going to answer a question very quickly that somebody uh, asked me on Facebook. They, they are asking why Maria Arrieta. My brand is called Maria Arrieta, and my name is Carolina Chavez. So, when I started, I had two partners, uh, my two friends from Colombia, and uh, we were trying to, to come up with a name for the brand. And we started uh, playing with our names and our last names, and that's how Maria Arrieta came to life, because one of my partners, her name is Maria, and my dad's last name, second last name is Arrieta. And uh, coincidentally, my grandmother from my father's side is Maria Rita. So I like I would like to think that she's sending me her blessing. So that's why Maria Arrieta is our brand. Um, I want to mention something about um, what Faisal said. These uh, they're they're empowering women, um, but this is this is huge. This is a huge uh, undertaking for for the industry, especially in, in in some countries in Asia. This has not been easy for any of them because, as we all know, um, most of the um, of the stores are closed. Most of the shopping is shut down completely, and um, that's why it's so important that we know these things happen because. We just, as consumers, we just don't, don't buy right now. It's not our, our main concern for obvious reasons, but these things are happening over there. Not only they're canceling orders, which as you heard, it's a big issue over there. Of course, because we don't have 
still a map on when things are gonna go back to normal completely if we go back to normal completely um, orders that uh, should be going in are not going in of course and uh, many of these factories I don't I don't I could not say all of them but many of these these factories they pay up front for the work they do like they buy the materials they use and, and all of that and then when companies like um, the United States companies that, that buy from them um, when they receive the, the orders then they pay so you see all these cancellations that are being um, done already these factories already paid for for all of these garments to be done so um, it is important that we know it is important that we uh, consider all of these aspects it's 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 vital in this fashion revolution movement because if we don't know any of this how can we make uh, better decisions when we buy we, how can we hold accountable all these companies for their practices right there's a um, a little bit of a, um, how do you say, it's not, not as, um, okay, Livia Firth, she's one of the biggest voices towards uh, human rights uh, in regards of uh, the fashion revolution, in regards of what happened in, in, in Dhaka, as we said before, and yesterday, she said that she's very upset because Fashion Revolution uh, um, wrote an index, it's a report where companies uh, say how transparent they are. They, 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 they do these questionnaires and they work with this organization to, to report on their transparency. So H&M is listed on top of that list. So Livia Firth, which also she produced this documentary called The True Cause, which I strongly recommended. It, it, it was for me like before and after my consumption habits. Um, <clears throat> she said, how is it possible that H&M is listed on top of this transparency index list when H&M is one of the biggest uh, you know buyers and um, because of their practice their fast fashion business model is that all of these things are happening on the other side of the world right um, <clears throat> so I ask you to to I encourage you to to look further to don't just buy because it's cheap and stay there no ask ask more questions because maybe a hundred percent of the time there's people there's people involved in these practices i did um an exercise i invited people to share with me pictures of themselves with their favorite uh, garments and to tell the, to tell me where these garments were made so here are some images you can see that uh, all of these uh, practices as are done all over the world countries are different there's countries in latin america especially mexico and peru where there's a lot of um, artisan work which is not the same as what happens in some Asian countries but the most important thing is that there's people behind every single garment we use mostly women a lot of children all of the pieces that we wear that have little sequins and things that you know are, are done with very delicate hands most certainly are done by children so we need to know this because we 
have the choice and we contribute to this or we do not contribute to this. Behind every single one of these garments, there's a human life. There's a human life, just as us. Somebody working, sacrificing family, sacrificing health, sacrificing their loved ones for us to have our clothes ready to buy, cheap, and dispose of them as fast as possible. So I invite you to think deeper, to dig deeper, to ask these questions. Where, how are they made? Who made them? I will be seeing you soon, next Wednesday, okay? Take care.